Hi friends, this is Marilyn from tarotclarity.com and I'm um, today's video is going to be super short and sweet and it's just um, focusing on how to pick a workhorse tarot deck. Now for the longest time I had two workhorses. I had the Italian tarot by Lo Scarabeo, the ancient Italian tarot. I love this deck, it's really beautiful, you know? I mean, it's got the, the Italian sensibilities and sensitivities. It's, it's just gorgeous. I have it upside down. Um, but it is just breathtaking, it's, it's just so beautiful. And um, it, it's always a crowd pleaser. People, when they see this deck, when I use it, you know, there's, you know, let's face it, most people are accustomed to seeing Rider Waite Smith tarot decks. I mean, there are very few feeds on YouTube that focus strictly on Tarot de Marseille, right? Most of them are um, mostly Ryder Coleman Smith or Coleman, you know, Waite Coleman Smith, right? So when someone who's accustomed to seeing that sees a deck like this, um, even though it's a pip style deck, they become enamored because it's such a pretty, pretty, pretty deck, you know. So this is one of my workhorses. Another one of my workhorses has always been the Spanish Tarot. And this one by Fournier. I love this deck. Um, it's It weighs less than these other two. Um, it's a little more compact. It's easier to throw in your handbag and not weigh, you know, weigh down your your handbag weight right and um it's it's a little quirky you know but um but i love it i, I just love this deck it's um it's it you know it it segregates colors like the pips have different colors like the batons are green i think we saw that the swords were swords have like a purple hilt um the coins are orange you know, yellow and orange, and then let's get the cups. What are the cups? And the cups are like a reddish orange, right? So, um, you know, you, you have color clues here, you know, and it's just vibrant and, and it's just, it's just a great, it's just a great deck. It's, it's beautiful. It's, uh, I just, I don't know. I just love this deck. And a new deck has come to my attention, and um, I've been using it. And this is the new Artisan Tarot deck, um, which is obviously strictly um, TDM based on the Nicholas Conver. Uh, and I've been gr grabbing this one. It's in between the weight, and here's the box. It's in between the weight of um, these other two decks. Um, this one is the heaviest. The Los Scarabeo deck is the heaviest. The Fournier deck is the lightest. And this one is somewhere in the middle. Now, even though they're all three roughly TDM, and the Italian deck definitely has um, the same sensitivity or s sensibility as far as the arrangement goes, um, you might see things differently in each of these three decks, right? This one, if, if you have an abundance of batons, you may be overcome by a sense of greenness. And so even though if you use numerology, you might say, well, the 10 of batons means, you know, this, that, or this other, you might also be persuaded to um, interpret it based on its color. Right? You don't necessarily have to combine number and suit to interpret a TDM or a PIP style deck, right? You can, you know, sometimes just be more influenced by the color, you know? Um, and this, in this deck, something else might come to mind, you know, like ornateness. I mean, look at the Look at this filigree here. It's very detailed, right? And you may not even look at it and see it or recognize it 
as the same shape even, you know, because it's got other things going on. This might remind you of a, an organ. If someone's a musician, you know, you may get like, you know, the sense of music from this card. You know, that's the kind the way it kind of strikes me. It reminds me of those ornate pipe organs that you see in, you know, special places. And then this one, you don't, again, you don't have to necessarily interpret it as the 10 in the suit. You know, you can interpret it as, oh, there's a blockage here. Or you may become fixated on the webbing, you know. You know, if there's a complicated situation and, you, and you're and you struck by this, you might say, oh, okay. Um, there's a complicated, inter, you know, a complicated web of things happening. So even though they're all three TDM style decks, more or less, you can be, you can certainly end up interpreting them differently than you use them. Okay, but I digress because the real gist of this um, video is on how do you pick or, you know, picking it, you know, a, a workhorse deck. Well, I think clarity, you know, if it's easy and, and there's not a whole, you know, if it's easy to see and there's not a whole lot of ambiguity about what you're looking at, I think that's one thing. Another thing is beauty. You know, just being, look at that. Oh my God, it's a gorgeous deck, right? Um, and sometimes when people come from a place of expecting to see Rider Waite Smith and they see a deck like this, you know, it's it, it opens their eyes and makes them a little more interested in Pip style decks than um, the more austere nature of a Pip style deck or a TDM deck. And sometimes I just pick a deck like this, the Fournier, because it's lightweight, it's compact, feels good in the hand, but they all do, but this one especially so. And also, I just like this one because the people are, they're not, I don't know what race or, or pigmentation they have, because there's no human being that I know that's like vibrantly orange, you know? And um, I kind of like that in, in, in this deck because um, you don't really, you know, they're just people, you know. They're people with a strange color that nobody's ever seen before. And, uh, you know, it includes everyone, and I think it offends no one. Um, another reason I like it, you know, is just that it's pretty. I, I, I like the colors, you know. I like the colors. And um, it's it's got clarity. It's got clarity as well. You know, there's no there's not much ambiguity. You know what you're looking at. So that's how I picked my three workhorses. I picked my three workhorses because for the reasons I just mentioned. You know, um, and I have confidence when I use them. I think confidence is a is a big thing. You know, I have great familiarity with these decks, so I. I, I know how they work. And uh, there are other decks that I have that are, you know, I feel the same way about, but because maybe they're art decks and I can't handily put them in my handbag um, or I don't really want to put them in a suitcase, that kind of thing. So these are these 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 decks work for that reason. Also, the one thing these three have in common is that they are shuffleable. You can shuffle them, you know, overhand, you know, like I t tend to do. Or Riffle Shuffle. They all three were cards that were created to be Riffle Shuffled. And if you're doing a large number of card, card readings in a row, um, you want to be able to mix the cards quickly and effectively, right? Um, you not you know, might not want to go through a long, drawn-out process to shuffle your cards if you've got five to do in one day or five to do in a, a period of, you know, a short period of time. Um you want to be able to mix your cards thoroughly, and so these cards do that. So I hope this video has been instructful and inst instructive to you. And um, I'll give me I'll, let me give you the names of each of these decks: the Nicholas Convert Tower of Marseille. It's brand new over at Kickstarter, put out by the Artists and Tarot folks, and their um, link is artistsandtarot.com. And I'll put the Kickstarter down below. 
I'll also put down where you can order this deck directly from Los Scarabeo, the Ancient Italian Tarot. Beautiful deck. I love it. As is the Fournier deck, the Spanish Tarot. Um, and I'll put a link for that one as well. Until next time, friends, peace and stay well.